Welcome back. So let's go ahead and talk about infinite loops. We use these loops, we will use these loops when we uh, don't know the exact number of iterations. So we will execute the loop until some condition is satisfied. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example where we have modified the previous example in which user keeps entering a number until the input is minus one. So this, uh, I'm pretty sure you remember this example, and I have just modified it a little bit. The modification is here in the for loop. So let me just uh, do this. It has no difference in terms of the code. I just want to isolate this part for you so you can see it. So again, as before, we have int i equals one, but hey, guess what? There is no condition in between, and the iteration keeps on going. So this is always true. There is nothing to terminate this loop. And unless there is some logic implemented within the loop to actually terminate it, the loop will continue on running pretty much indefinitely. However, it will self-terminate, it will, it will terminate with the execution of the breaks statement once minus one is entered. Here, let me just show you. I can build and run this, and I can enter, you see, I can just keep on entering, uh, numbers, but it will never end. So it will continuously keep on asking me to enter a number until I type in minus one. Then it's going to give me the sum and terminate the execution and term and pretty much end exit the program. So this will continue on repeatedly repeating inf indefinitely until the user enters something until the user enters minus one. But this is how, that's not, that's not the important part. This is how you create the infinite for loop by just leaving the condition empty. You could also give a condition which will never be satisfied. Uh, perhaps not in this particular statement, but however, but there are, there are, there are some situations where you can do that. Perhaps you can even do it here. I'm just too lazy to think about it now because it's completely relevant as you can just leave it empty and that's pretty much it. That's going to create the infinite loop without any problems. Now, the infinite version of the while loop, well, that's a this this would be it. So, while and then you then you could just type in uh true. So, while true, I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and write some pseudocode. While true I don't know, some code, blah, blah, blah. And down below we could write an if statement like we did before, some, some condition, and then you would have break. So this would be this would be an example of the while, of the infinite while loop. So you could write in while true, or you could just write a positive positive integer here. Like you could just write a positive number here. Sorry, you just type it one for example. This would also evaluate the true, and this would continue forever until, uh, with some logic within the loop, the loop would be terminated, like with the break statement. Okay, uh, so one more one more example would be basically instead of one, you could write in while I don't know uh, two twenty seven <laughs> makes no sense. But as I said, you could write a positive number here and it would evaluate the true. You could write I do believe that you can even write the negative numbers, etc. I do believe that I have shown that in the previous examples, but I don't like to play around with these things while I'm coding. I like to write either one or zero because those are synonyms for true and false, and, or I would like, or I like to write true or false. There is no reason why you should write anything else other than that if you just need the evaluation to be true continuously. However, you know later on things get complicated, but for the time being, there is no need to use anything else other than true and false or zero and one. But as you go through the code later on, the need becomes greater and greater and the demands become greater and greater. So you have to use different things. So I could have written 227 here and this would also be an infinite loop. Anyway, that's all I want to show in this brief example here. Now, in the follow-up tutorial, I'll just explain nested loops, how you can nest them one in one inside of another, and that will be it as far as the loops are concerned.